Dr. Geisler, are you here? Yes? What do you want, Mike Lacona Cratchit? I wanted to ask you about this. I just came back from a vacation and found these posted all over town. Why did you do that? Because you didn't... Because you deny inerrancy. This is news to me. Where did I do this? Here, in your latest book. Uh, where? Surely you can see your obvious denial of inerrancy. No, I really can't. You can't? It's quite plain you're calling the veracity of scripture into question. You've handed our enemies a tremendous weapon. By... writing a 700-page book arguing that Jesus rose from the dead? No, Matthew says the saints literally arose and you say they didn't. But what I say is that the report is apocalyptic. That means that Matthew didn't intend for it to be taken as a literal report. That would be like saying that Revelation meant Satan was a real dragon, and then saying that someone was denying inerrancy because they believed that the dragon was a symbol for Satan. I mean, I may be wrong about Matthew's intentions, sure, but that doesn't mean I deny inerrancy. Humbug! I say you're denying inerrancy and that's that! Look, instead of posting these public notices, why don't we have a scholarly conclave to discuss these issues? We can invite a lot of scholars, submit papers giving our views, and discuss this rationally. What do you say? Can we only invite people who already agree with me? No. Can I delete from the record any challenges made to my authority or asking me to prove that what I say is correct? No. Once this conclave is over, will you admit you denied inerrancy and publicly repent? Only if you show I was actually denying inerrancy, and I'm not seeing how it's possible I was. Well, in that case, there's only one thing to do. Which is? Uh. And remember, I'm handling it this way because I love you, brother! <laughs> Ah, <sighs> uh, let's see. I'll have him uninvited from that conference in New Orleans next. Then that one in Charlotte. I wonder if I can convince the Elks Club to have him blacklisted. Hey, who are you? I am the ghost of inerrancy past. Behold! Well, this is the 1983 Evangelical Theological Society meeting. Yes. Tell me what is happening here. Well, that's Robert Gundry. He denied inerrancy too, that rascal. So, you claim. But in reality, he too denied not inerrancy but your interpretation of it just as happened with Mike Cratchit. What? Now see here. No. You see here. Does not inerrancy consider the intentions of the author? Well, yes. And if the author intends not to report history, then what error is there in saying he has not reported history? Um, uh... So it is. Your cause against this man was unjust. Uh... Enough. Uh. Hey, who are you? Huh. Me? I'm the ghost of inerrancy present. Give a peek through that window and have a look at what happens because of your bullying. What the? Why, look at all those scholars and others supporting him, including two of my very own fellow signers of the Energy Statement. I'll have them all blacklisted. Ha! Huh. Sorry, Scroogey. You won't be able to keep the truth limited like you did with Gundry. This is the information age, and the truth will get out through countless media outlets in ways you'll never be able to control with bullying tactics the way you did before. Oh yeah? Well, look over there. I have my own bloggers and media outlets, too. That crowd? A bunch of unqualified non-scholars just repeating what you say and reaffirming it while ignoring the real arguments. 
and that'll become clear to all, too. Patient, Scroogey. The time for your kind of authoritarian bullying is over. You can't get away with that anymore. And while you might get Mike Cratchit disinvited from a few places that hold your same narrow authoritarian views, there'll be way more who will see the quality of all his work and consider that to be far more important. But, if by chance you did succeed, let's show you what would happen. Huh? Who, who are you? I am the ghost of inerrancy future. Behold, Scrooge, and see the shadows of what would be to come if you succeeded in your quest. What? That's me speaking in a church. But there's only three people there. Yes. One of your larger crowds, I might add. But how? Bah! You do not see? In the shadow of the future, your deplorable treatment of my crash had caused other scholars to withhold their work in fear of losing their jobs and livelihood. In turn, there was nothing more made by which the brothers and sisters could defend their faith against those who would take it from them. You, Scrooge, left them all defensive with your anti-intellectualism. They saw how you handled the debate with Mike Cratchit, not with reason or logic or even sound use of scripture, but by use of authoritarian witch hunt tactics and by avoiding challenges to your authority in a cowardly way. So it is, Scrooge. But I have saved the worst for you for last. See now what else happens to you in the shadow of the future. Oh, it was just a dream. I'll show those fools. I'll make sure the legacy of inerrancy that I've established remains intact for generations to come. Yes, sir, how can I help you today? Um, I was noticing some of your books in the window there, and I wondered... Yes, yes? Do you have Mike Lakota's new book on the resurrection of Jesus? <laughs> <laughs>